Hi everybody, this is sort of a review, but really more of a 1200 mile check-in on the 2024 Ford Maverick. The Mavericks have been out since 2022. The hybrids have been hard to get ever since they first came out. This is a hybrid. I ordered it actually last July, and uh, as of early May, my order had not been scheduled. So one just happened to show up on the lot, very similar to the way my configuration was when I ordered it, which was the base model, the XL. So I decided to jump on it. The Maverick comes in three flavors. This is the XL, the base model. There's an XLT and the top end Lariat. Now we'll take a look at the engine, but the way to get in there is you actually have to pull the lever twice. Once and then twice to get it to fully release. And again, this is the 2.5 liter hybrid. And owning a hybrid is completely new to me. Now again, this is the 2.5 liter Atkinson cycle in line four. They do make a two liter Echo Boost that is turbocharged. This is not turbocharged. But the Atkinson cycle basically works uh, a little different than your standard engine in that the uh, piston, when it comes up, usually the valves close right at the bottom of the intake stroke. Uh, they actually stay open. The intake valves stay open just a little bit as the piston is coming back up and it pushes a little bit of the charge out, a little bit of the air, which sort of doesn't make sense on the surface, but basically they do that to improve the expansion ratio and that improves efficiency at the cost of a little bit of low end torque. But I've been driving this now for a uh, while well, since early May. It is now uh, just after the 4th of July, and I think it has plenty of power despite being a hybrid. I always thought a hybrid would be anemic or sluggish, but that is not the case. So this is the ECVT, or the Electronic uh, Continuously Variable Transmission over here on the side. There are two separate cooling systems, one for the battery and one for the engine. Uh, it's kind of a little different from what you usually have with a standard car. It does have louvers little plastic louvers in the front here and these all close to control the airflow through the radiator and they actually go all the way down here to the bottom of the grill uh, and that's all computer controlled so it controls airflow to control how much heat uh, is retained in the engine which is important under different driving conditions and different outside temperatures and the horsepower on this engine here is right around I think 191 horsepower and that's combined with the gas engine along with the uh, electric drive and this is not a plug-in hybrid. This is all charged through the engine or through regenerative braking. So I've heard of plans for a plug-in hybrid, possibly, but we'll just have to see if they come out with the future uh, plug-in hybrid for the Maverick. Now, when I ordered my Maverick originally, I ordered it with zero options, thinking that with all of the supply chain issues and problems with getting scheduled, if you had certain options picked out, that if I had zero options, well, mine would be first in line to be built. Well, that is not the case. The popularity of the hybrid has made these very difficult to get, even when they're completely stripped down. So this particular one, when it came in, it was ordered with three things. Uh, the first one being the engine block heater, which being the spring and summer here, I have not had a chance to check out. So I will have to do that later this year. The second thing it came with were the splash guards, which now that I see them on the vehicle, and see how they are uh, nice and functional or a little dirty right now but I certainly would have actually ordered those on the vehicle and the final thing that it came with or the third option if you can see is the full-size spare and it says full size but it is actually slightly smaller than the tires that come on the vehicle it's the same height so it will fit and uh, work just fine but it's a little bit narrower of a profile so these are 225 65 17s and the spare is 215-60R17, so a little different size on the quote, full size, unquote, spare. And you also see that this does not have the trailer hitch, so there's just a blanking plate there that you can cut out if you ever decide to add either a factory Ford trailer hitch or an aftermarket. And the backup camera is right there underneath the Ford logo. Let's take a quick look at the bed. This is Ford's flex bed. It's actually pretty cool. Now this is the first truck I've owned and the first hybrid, so there's a lot of learning for me here in this. But let me hop into the bed and I can show you a little more 
So this is the bare bones XL model, so it does not come with the tailgate protector or uh, the bed liner here. So those are aftermarket that I purchased through Ford. And it did not come with these tie downs also. I had to add those. It does come with the XL, it does come with these hooks here on either side. It comes with the lower hook on either side. It does not come with the top hook. I had to add those. And the XL does not come with the holes already tapped. So I had to tap these for M6 and I had to tap these for M8. Uh, it's real easy to do, but it does not come with those pre-tap. Just another way to save a few pennies here and there. That's why the XL comes in at such a low price point. Uh, the other things, part of the flex bed system, you've got these notches here that you can uh, put pieces of wood that are cut to the right length. So we've got one up front, one right here, there's one here, one over here, one here, and there's one there. So we have a lot of different options to configure the bed for uh, keeping your cargo from moving around. Now the rails here, it does not come with these rails. You can get uh, a rail system from Ford but I made these myself. This is 80-20 and then I machined these blocks out. And then I bought some extra hooks off of Amazon. They pretty much match the factory hooks and they're fairly inexpensive. And then these are adjustable. I can just loosen these bolts and slide these blocks to whatever position and lock them down. And then I just put a uh, little extra hook on there and that's just an M8 tap through that block there. So if I need to hook something on there, uh, I have that option. And then down here in the bottom, We'll look at this uh, on the on the XL. This is this is hollow behind this. If you open this up, there's just nothing behind it. It just goes down into the fender uh, and disappears into nothing. But on your uh, upper level models, uh, you can get with your 120 volt outlet and a 12 volt outlet. Now you can add that stuff yourself later on, and it actually comes with these little 12 volt. If I can get that open with one hand. There we go. Almost there. So this opens up, and you'll see release that connector so there's a 12 volt connector right there and it comes with a little pigtail that you can plug into this and it has two bare wires that you can plug in or uh, connect to like a 12 volt outlet if you wanted to put one over here and you can get those on Amazon for 10 15 20 dollars all day long and this is the same on either side so you've got a 12 volt connector available on this side or this side over here now a cool thing on the tailgate is you can let the tailgate all the way down flat like this if you're carrying something that's longer than the four and a half foot uh, actually uh, four and a half foot deep and you can get a, a four foot wide sheet of plywood or drywall whatever between the fender wells there and it will rest on top of these but as the back of your lumber or your uh, plywood hangs out here it'll tend to droop so what they do is if you raise up the tailgate a little bit you can unlatch it here and then bring it up one and you do that on both sides of course but the angle that this tailgate is now at the edge here is in the same plane as the tops of the fender wells so when you put a piece of plywood in here the back of the tailgate will support it so it's not uh, drooping out the back of your uh, truck and again you can add supports for example you could put your uh, piece of wood across here on both sides to support the front of your uh, whatever you're hauling so it doesn't sag in the middle. And on either side there, there's a little QR code. If you scan that in, it will take you to a cool website that shows you all kinds of do-it-yourself projects for the flex bed system, as well as all the different features and functionality of the flex bed system. But again, the XL comes with without the bed mat, without the tailgate liner here, uh, without the side rails all that stuff can be added uh, aftermarket or through Ford if you want to go through Ford accessories and again being the XL model uh, a lot of people comment how cheap some of the plastic is on the inside and you know for what I paid for this with taxes it was just under 30,000 I can't really complain it's going to do everything I needed to do including fit in my garage with the garage door down so I can't really complain uh, the seat here pulls up, there's a little strap that you pull, and you get a couple cubbies down here in the bottom for storage. The battery, the 12 volt battery is right there in that hump. There's a smaller cubby on the other side. You can put toe straps, things like that in there. Uh, I got a blanket and a little 12 volt inverter. 
uh, there's plenty of room for, for small things. Actually, they're a little deeper than they look. It's kind of deceiving. And we uh, pull that strap, let the seat back down. Now over here, the center console, I added this. I got this off of uh, Amazon. Actually, my wife did. I don't know how much it costs, but they're fairly inexpensive. But this little notch right here matches the little tab in the center. And you can get these from Ford Accessories also. That's a nice little cup holder. Now again, the XL just comes with a single 12 volt outlet. Uh, they have USB uh, outlets back here on the uh, higher models, the uh, XLT. And uh, again, there are uh, options that you can upgrade your uh, XL to also, which I did not. Again, this is the base model. And that is it for the back, other than, uh, let's see, the seat here actually does pull forward. There's a little strap right there you pull. And there's what it looks like when the seat is pulled forward. You've got your jack hardware back here stowed away. This little vent right here, this is for letting inside uh, air out of the vehicle. So when you turn the air conditioner on, for example, and the windows are up, it's pushing air inside as long as you don't have the recirculation button pushed. But as long as you're pushing air in the vehicle, these will open and let air out and not let air in because you don't want any exhaust from outside of the vehicle coming back in. So they're just sort of like a little check valve for the inside cabin air. Uh, the door panels on the side, we've got some places here for some water bottles and some other little compartments down there. It's the same on the front. Uh, the floor mats, it does not come with any real good floor mats to speak of, so these are aftermarket. I got these on Amazon. Custom molded, fit the Maverick exactly. Uh, I recommend getting something like that. <clears throat> front door panels are the same. You got the pocket there for water. Sort of a deep little cubby area there also. I know some people, I've heard them complain about the cheap plasticky interior. And, and again, you know, on a Lariat, I guess you're still starting off with a base XL underneath everything. The sheet metal and all is still the base model. And again, this is supposed to be an entry level type of truck. Uh, it's not a sixty, seventy thousand uh, dollar vehicle. So you've got to take that for what it's worth. Now, when we look at the uh, screen here, one thing, again, since this is my first higher tech vehicle, let me go ahead and put the key in there. So I was thinking that this screen would be an interface for all of your charging functions and what's going on. It is not. It is only a, uh, an interface for the HVAC controls, and it just really shows. Now, on the inside, uh, when I first got in this vehicle for the very first time, I was expecting this screen to be more of an interface with your charging system. So you can see the status of, uh, status of what's going on with the engine and the charging system. But that is not the case. This is only an interface for your radio uh, and for your iPhone or your Android phone. It does have the Apple CarPlay for your iPhone but it does not have any interface with the engine or the charging system. It does have, if I turn the fan up or down, it shows that, and then it shows the temperature as I adjust the knob here, but that's it as far as uh, HVAC controls. It doesn't really control anything. It just shows you what you just did with the knob. Down here, this is the knob for getting into your driving mode, park, reverse, neutral, and drive. I still don't like the rotary knob there. It's okay. There is no detent to lock you out from going into, yeah, let me put it, uh, let's see, turn the vehicle on. So you rotate this, there's some glare there, but you can see drive, neutral, reverse and park. There's nothing to keep you from going from uh, neutral right into park while you're moving under five miles an hour. So you need to keep that in mind. You'd think there'd be a little detent that you'd have to squeeze or push down uh, to get into park or reverse, but you don't. You only have to push in on the brake. Your uh, USB here, you got your two different USB ports uh, on the XL. Over here, we do have one more 12 volt receptacle. Down here, we've got mode, so you can shift as I push the button there. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Yeah, I can switch from normal tow haul slippery eco that's where you get the best mileage and then sport mode and let me tell you sport mode has got a lot more kick to it than i figured it would uh, on a hybrid and down here you've got your 
anti-lock, uh, or your traction control, I should say. And then this is the hold button. You push that in, and when you come to a stop, uh, it basically holds the vehicle in that position so you can take your foot off the brake and you won't drift backwards. So I've been in here messing with the electrical system for a little bit, and I actually have the AC on. So it sensed a slight drop in the voltage and it went ahead and kicked the engine on to help charge the battery, which is perfectly normal. Now you can actually start the engine when you're sitting in the vehicle and you turn the key on, you can actually blip the throttle here real quick and the uh, gas engine will start up real quick and run through a quick uh, charge cycle. If the battery needs to be charged, it'll run for a minute or two or longer if it needs to charge it. And it does have a adjustable uh, steering wheel is your lighting controls. You've got the bed light. This is the little uh, button you push to get to your fuel door on the side to open it. And then over here you can uh, make the lights on the dashboard brighter or dimmer. So if you push this little button right here, I think you heard the little click and it releases the little door here. And that's for your gas. And the XL is currently only available in two-wheel drive. I think there may be plans for an all-wheel drive for 2025, but uh, we don't have that for 2024. So we'll just have to see. Actually, that should be pretty soon. Uh, Ford should be releasing the 2025 specs. So the other thing, this one does not have... Uh, you'll notice on uh, like the uh, off-road package, I believe, and the Tremor, they've got uh, places here where there are actually tow hooks that are attached to the frame. Uh, but these are just blocked out. I've seen people put their own aftermarket fog lights in there too, which I guess you could do as long as you can cut that out nicely. These are the stock steel wheels that come with the uh, base model XL. I don't know, I wasn't real hot on them at first, but... The more I see them on the vehicle, the more I've kind of warmed up to them, or I guess I should say I don't dislike them as much as I thought I would. So we'll see. I may change the wheels at some point. And the base model does not come with power mirrors. These are manual. You have to push them and move them around. They do. It's a little stiff. They do fold in. The seat on the XL is manual, so if you want to move it up or down, you got to push this little bar up in order to move the seat and I actually like that uh, electric seats are nice but you have to sit there and wait I'm short so I've got to move the seat all the way back to get out and all the way forward this is nice you just pull the lever slide up and you're done now there is a you can move this up and down it actually raises and lowers the seat and then this lever right here is what kicks the entire seat back forward and that seat functionality is only on the driver's side you can see we only have one lever here to move the seat back up and down you can't raise or lower the actual seat and it's manual just like the driver's side you pull the bar up to slide the seat to whatever position you want and then release it to lock it and we're in the back again uh, the XL does not have a uh, armrest that pulls down either uh, that's on a higher model it does have adjustable headrests here that you can move uh, and you can fit three people in the back it does have three seat belts and it is a unibody construction so there is no frame like you have on the typical truck also these quarter panels in the rear they are bolted on they are not welded on so if you ever had to replace one due to hopefully not rust in the future or uh, damage you can get an aftermarket or uh, actually an OEM panel from Ford and you can bolt the panel on yourself and as far as mileage goes, you can see from these screenshots that I've been taking over the last 1,200 miles or so, uh, that I can get into the 50s and uh, over 60 quite often. Uh, and it, ideally, a hybrid shines when you can drive it on uh, city streets where there's a lot of stop and start. You can take advantage of the regenerative braking, take advantage of the coasting. Uh, and as long as I'm in the eco mode or echo mode, uh, and I'm very careful, stay out of the gas, try to take advantage of the regenerative braking, uh, things like that. You can see I can get mileage like that pretty frequently, which is good. Again, that's the whole reason I bought a hybrid. I don't really drive on the highway. In fact, I have not had it on the highway yet, so I can't say what kind of mileage it gets. Uh, but for city driving, again, stop and start, that's where the hybrid really shines.
Okay, so now I want to talk about the ECVT a little more, or the electronically controlled uh, constantly variable transmission. So in the past, these have gotten sort of a bad rap because they uh, would have uh, issues. This is a completely different transmission. This is not the old style CVT. There are no chains, there are no belts, no pulleys. Uh, they used to have cones that could vary in width and a belt would change the position uh, within the pulley and that would give you your variable ratio on the drive. This doesn't have anything like that. This is all gears, planetary gears. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube videos now that show the internal workings of these transmissions. So if you do a quick search, uh, you can see in more detail exactly how these work. But on the inside, in addition to the gears, there are two electric motors. There's one that is the drive motor, and of course that's the one that uh, is driving your wheels when you're in electric mode, or when you're in hybrid mode, it is helping the gas engine. The second one is a starter generator, and it does exactly what it says. It's a starter motor, which is uh, connected to your engine. And what's interesting is, on a normal gas engine that we've had for years and years, you turn the key and you hear the starter engage. You hear the Bendix engage, uh, the flywheel. You hear that classic sound, uh, and the engine starts, and then as soon as it starts, the Bendix disengages. And you hear that on vehicles today that have the start-stop feature. Uh, when they stop at a, at a stoplight, you hear the engine stop, and then as soon as they touch the gas, you hear the starter engage very quickly, uh, and the vehicle is off, or off and running, I should say. Well, the way this works with the starter generator, since the starter is coupled to the motor, or the engine, uh, when it turns the engine over, you don't hear anything engage because nothing is engaging. There is no Bendix, there is no flywheel. So uh, you really don't even hear anything. And it also has the generator on it, which is part of the regenerative braking, so that when you're slowing down, coasting, or you uh, on a medium or light application on the brake, you're using the regenerative braking to take the energy of your momentum and instead of turning that into heat and friction at the brakes, you're actually turning that back into electrical energy through the generator and dumping that back into your battery. Now I'll show you what the engine sounds like uh, when we start it. So what I'll do is put the key in, uh, turn the vehicle on, of course that won't start it. So I'll put the camera over here and point it at the engine and you'll hear what it sounds like when it starts. So let me go inside and turn it on. So there you could hear when the starter actually, I guess, uh, I don't really want to say engaged, but the starter uh, turned the engine on. Uh, there really wasn't much to hear. And again, the way you start it is you put the key in the ignition, you turn the vehicle on, and then you just blip the gas like that, and the engine starts. Now, of course, there's no tachometer, so you don't have any real indication that the engine is running, other than you can certainly hear it. And keep in mind that you don't have to start the engine to drive it. Uh, as long as the battery has enough of a charge, then uh, you can drive in electric mode right off the bat. You don't have to have the gas engine running unless you want to. <clears throat> All right, so this is, like I said, sort of a review, sort of a 1200 mile check-in for the 2024 Ford Maverick. And I can say that for me, it really checks all the boxes. It fits in my garage, it's affordable. Um, it does everything that I would expect a small compact truck like this to do. So I can't really find anything not to like about it. So if you're in the market for a, a little truck like this, again, there's not much competition, especially when it comes to a hybrid compact truck. Uh, they're showing up on the dealer lots now. Gas engines are pretty easy to get uh, compared to what they were Hybrids are still a little, a little harder to get, so if you're in the market for that, you might have to look around a little more. So, thanks for watching. Post some comments. Let me know if you have any questions.